everyone uh, welcome back so what we have covered in the last class is calculus of variation right and we did some important derivations if i quickly remind you so we started with a action integral if you recall between two limits a to b and then we consider one functional that is f y y prime x. So, this is the action integral and then uh, we applied first variation and we equate it to 0 because our objective was to find out optimal Uh, solution for y of x. What does it mean? Uh, we call it a stationary condition if you recall stationary condition right. So, effectively what we do we consider a weak variation and then y of x over that we actually consider a weak variation and then uh, the variation this weak variation it vanishes at the boundary. So, this is the very important property that we use. Then once we use this expression we derived two very important equation one is so this is the first equation and then we have f minus y prime do f x is equal to constant. So, that is second equation. So, these are called Euler's equation, Euler's first equation and second equation. So, that tells us the stationary condition. Okay. So, with that uh, background, let us move towards Hamilton's principle. Okay. And if you recall, here also we actually have the action integral i, which is equal to t1 to t2 and then we have Lagrangian of dt. If I draw the schematic diagram, so we have time axis, we have two time points t1 and t2 and <coughs> at t1 the particle is at A and T2 it uh, is at B. So, this is our QK and the question is which path is uh, going to be followed and that is the reason we first define the theory of calculus of variation very briefly obviously because we will use that uh, for the action integral we have in case of Hamilton's principle. Now, again in this case we can apply this weak variation, uh, we will do that in a minute, but the Hamilton's principle tells us that the first variation over this action integral is equal to 0. So, we will see today if we do that, 
what we get. Now, we have this action integral which is equal to t1 to t2 then L of dt so that we can write t that is the kinetic energy of qk and then qk dot minus the potential energy vk integrated over the time instant t1 to t2. Obviously, in this case again uh, we can take this first variation inside. So, what we have t1 to t2 then this first variation will go inside. So, what we have delta t I am not writing this uh, bracketed term. So, then minus delta v dt. Now, uh, what we can do is uh, we can expand this term and that we will do in a minute. So, what we have is t1 to t2. Now, the first variation if we apply uh, this t is a function of qk that is the generalized coordinate and qk dot. Then obviously, uh, if we apply this first variation what we will get Right. So, that is the expression we have uh, when we um, consider this first variation. Now, uh, obviously, uh, what we can do, we can see we have a q k delta q k here and another is there. So, we can simplify this expression. So, we have t 1 to t 2. First expression will be dou dou qk within bracket t minus v times delta qk plus we have the second term as is it is not going to change. So, that is the expression we have. Now, if we look at the second term, obviously it is integral between t1 to t2, then this quantity and this we can further expand because we can perform this integral and for that what we do is uh, we consider first function and second function. So, uh, this is our first function and this one is the second function. And then what we do is uh, we first expand this integral. So, t1 to t2 first expression will remain as is t minus v. By the way, we can actually uh, simplify this t minus v is the Lagrangian. So, we have Lagrangian times delta qk dt plus then t1 to t2. So, you have the first function and then uh, we have the second function, but if you look at the second function, it is the variation over q k dot. So, what is q k dot? Uh, q 
QK dot is equal to D DT of QK. So it implies if we take the first variation on both side, we have this quantity and then uh, we can simplify this. So delta QK dot will be equal to D DT delta QK. So we can uh, modify this expression and that will do here. So we have D DT then delta QK DT. Fine. So we have our first term, first function and second function. So this term will remain as is. Then for this expression, because we have already considered first function and second function, then uh, obviously uh, we'll have first function, integration of second function. So integration of second function, if we do, we have delta QK and that we evaluate uh, between uh, t1 and t2, then minus we have integral t1 to t2 derivative of then first function. So we take the derivative of first function. So it is this quantity and integration of second function, which will be delta dk dt. I think I missed a dot here, so a dot there, okay. A dot was here, so I missed that. So now we have this expression and uh, obviously, I mean, what we get out of this expression again, this quantity, What will happen to this quantity because we evaluate at the boundary and then um, this will vanish. So we will be left with the two term t1 to t2 then minus we have t1 to t2 d dt, then we have um, right. Now if you look at this expression, again uh, it is the partial differential of t with respect to qk dot. And if you look at the starting point, this v, it is a function of qk only and not qk dot. So if I modify this with t minus v, obviously if we open this bracket, first term will be the first differential, partial differential of t with respect to qk dot and the moment we apply the same over v, it will vanish. So effectively we can modify this expression and ultimately this is nothing but the partial differential of the Lagrangian with respect to qk dot. Okay, so we are almost there. Now, if we just combine these two, so what we have do L do QK minus D DT times do L do QK dot times delta qk dt. And the first variation of the action integral, what we will do, we will equate it to 0 as per Hamilton's principle. Now if that is the case, you can easily conclude that delta qk not equal to 0 between uh, t1 to t2, then obviously what we have is dou L do 
qk minus d dt times dou l dou qk dot is equal to 0. This is very important relation. We call it Lagrange equation. And this is the equation we are going to use to derive the equation of motion for any arbitrary system. This is the very important derivation. So, we apply first variation over the action integral, apply the concept of calculus of variation and then the moment we follow the definition of Hamilton's principle, ultimately what we get is this important equation. Uh, we call it Lagrange equation and then uh, we will see this is a quadratic uh, equation because we have this uh, ddt operating over this partial derivative with respect to qk dot. But this is the most important equation, we call it Lagrange equation and then uh, we will use this expression to find out the equation of motion. So, Lagrange equation. So, what is that equation? It is now obviously the question comes in our mind that if we take a physical problem and we apply this, can we derive the equation of motion? So, for that let us consider the example and again we will go back to the first problem that we considered is the pendulum, right. So, it has a bob and then that moves to the new position and the degrees of freedom in this case is theta we also can define the physical space okay now in this case what we have is uh, the deformed geometry so uh, the length of the chord is L, so this is L. Obviously, if we apply the coordinate geometry, we get this is L minus L cos theta and then this is L cos theta. So, we will apply Lagrange equation to derive the equation of motion. For that, we have to first find out the expression for Lagrangian. So, this is L is T minus V. Now, if you look at the position of this bob, so at theta, uh, we can actually calculate the kinetic energy. What will be that? It is half mass of the bob and then uh, what is theta? Theta is equal to S um, by L. So, that means S is equal to L theta and obviously ds dt is equal to L d theta dt. So, this is S the curved path and because we are considering small uh, deformation, so uh, we get this expression. Now, the kinetic energy then is half m, so and then uh, it is 
L square theta dot square so that we get from here minus the potential energy that is m g l minus l cos theta. So that is the Lagrangian. So it is a function of again theta, theta dot and t. So now we have uh, the Lagrangian and then again what we have to do? We have to apply the Lagrange equation so that we have here this is equal to 0. So, our generalized coordinate in this case is theta. Now, if we carry out this task, so what we have is ddt of do dou theta dot is uh, acting over half m l square theta dot square minus, I am not writing the second term because there is no theta dot here, so there is no point of writing that, it will automatically vanish. So, this quantity minus dou dou theta, again in this case, I am not considering the first term because there is no theta here. So, what we have is again minus, so that will ultimately make this plus, we have mg L minus L cos theta, which is equal to 0. So, if we carry out this task, what we have d dt, then we have here half m L square then we will have 2 theta dot plus the first term in the this expression will be 0. So, what we have is dou dou theta applied over minus L cos theta. So, it will be L sin theta is equal to 0. Then again these two will get cancelled and now if we apply d dt what we will have m l square theta double dot plus l sine theta is equal to 0. Now, we have already uh, started with the assumption that our theta is small. So, we have m l square theta double dot plus l theta is equal to 0. I think I have missed one m g term. So, we have mg here and then obviously mg term will come here and ultimately this will be modified. So, mg l theta equal to 0 and then finally what we get is theta double dot plus g by l theta is equal to 0. So, this is the equation we derived earlier using um, equilibrium condition at the beginning of this course, right. So, we get again the same equation when we apply Lagrange formulation and then uh, what is the natural frequency in this case? Omega n square is equal to g by L, right. It's the same expression. So, you can see the Lagrange equation actually offers us the governing equation of motion. In this case, it is a second order linear differential equation that we get applying the Lagrange equation. So, first what we do? We find out the Lagrangian that means kinetic energy and potential energy and then we apply this expression that comes from the calculus of variation and then it effectively optimizes what? The solution of this quantity is what? Theta of t, right? That is the generalized coordinate. We already 
and describe that. So this theta of t will obviously optimize the action integral. So we get the path between t1 to t2 that offers us the stationary condition that means first variation of the action integral is equal to 0. So this derivation clearly tells you how we actually adopt the concept of calculus of variation and then uh, if we apply that over Hamilton's principle then we effectively get this uh, equation Lagrange equation and then that gives us the equation of motion and for any complex system now if we can quantify the kinetic energy and potential energy for that we again start with the generalized coordinate then we can adapt this and find out the equation of motion. As we progress in this course we will see how we will use this equation for uh, multi degree of freedom system because that is the main objective of this derivation. But before that we will again go back to the Hamilton's principle and then we will also derive the Hamilton's approach and we will derive the Hamilton's canonical form that will offer again the equation of motion that we will see as we progress in this course. But for the time being today we have derived a very important relation that is Lagrange equation and we optimize the functional and for that we use the concept of variation and then if we do that the example tells us that we get the same set of equation of motion for the same system. So that convinces us that we can easily adapt this uh, equation, this actually this qk for all k, k equal to 1 to n. So we will get a set of equations for multi degree of freedom system. So this discussion tells us how we are going to derive the equation of motion for multi degree of freedom system. So with that let me conclude here, we will continue in the next class on Hamilton's principle. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.